forbidden list fast approaching or not approaching at all, there has been heavy speculation on what cars should go on the forbidden list. While I thought this would be the perfect time around to actually talk about a forbidden list that everyone would want. This forbidden list isn't aimed at making a prediction on what Konami would do. This is a prediction list aimed to make as many balanced decks in this format as possible. Now I know some of you guys may love this format, some of you may dislike it, but I am pretty sure the inclusion of some of the older popular decks inside of this format would make everyone happy. So let's jump on in. Our first pit stop is talking about the ever so popular banned section of a forbidden list. Banning certain cards or unbanning certain cards typically change a format entirely. And to be honest with you guys, I feel that one could make a strong argument for certain cards being banned in a prediction list. Unfortunately for them, this is not a prediction list. This is a balance of the entire meta, so there's not going to be a single card being hit on this particular list. The format is still fairly balanced, and while the main hittable problematic cards would be the Hockley Fibers combo, with one and a half cards you can create a situation where you have a Herald of Arclight, possibly a Borlode Savage Dragon, and almost anything at your will. But to be honest with you guys, there are quite a few problems with this particular combo, one, you have to play quite a bit of bricks. Two, you have to dedicate a lot of your extra deck space. Three, the format is still always evolving with new cards coming out in Toon Chaos as well as a huge shift coming to the metagame. One would think that hitting this would be preemptive. We also have to keep in mind that all of this information is from watching online duels. We know how reliable those are. I'm pretty sure there's that Blackwing player that's went undefeated with this combo in his deck. He's sure he's gonna top that YCS. Yeah, we'll, we'll see when that actually happens in real life. So at this current second, I don't think that hitting the synchro combo right now is actually worth it in a fair and competitive format. Not every deck can use it, and while Edlich might be the kingpin of the strategies that can, Edlich is fairly balanced. Busted, but balanced. Everything you'd want out of a tier one deck. Moving on to the limited portion of our list, I feel like Pendulum players will rejoice as Astrogal Sorcerer in this Forbidden list moves off of Forbidden Bile to Limited. Now, Astrogal Sorcerer in multiple copies seems rather problematic. I mean, imagine destroying a Mythical Beast Master Cerberus to search another Mythical Beast Master Cerberus. Huh, that's not that good. But imagine destroying a Mythical Beast Jackal King to add another copy from your deck to you. That is this card ceiling. I don't think there's another ceiling. That's not amazing. It's, it's good at best. Regardless, I don't think that Astrogal Sorcerer at multiple copies would be healthy for a card game. I feel like some of you smart players down below will tell me how busted Astrogal Sorcerer is and how it should stay to zero. But currently, I see it as a huge boost for the Pendulum deck that lost its coherency to be able to splash every archetype inside of the strategy and now get a staple card that helps Pendulums abroad. Masterpiece the Draco Slaying King is another card that I feel people just may shudder over. This card was a complete monster in 2017, making itself unaffected by two of the current types, monster spells or traps, and being able to banish any continuous spell from the graveyard being a quick effect, destroying a card on the field. There's almost no justification for Masterpiece to come off the list, until you realize that Dragonic Diagram is at 1. I feel like Dragonic Diagram at 1 changes the landscape of how true Draco or continuous spell and trap card decks operate. Yes, you do get a very powerful card that's a lot harder to search and works better inside of a true Draco deck, a strategy that's completely fell off the face of the map since Dragonic Diagram going to 1, and in return, you have to run a potential brick you have to dedicate spell and traps to be tributed for the Draco Slam King, and it's not at three, so you can't consistently get this card to your hand. I feel like Masterpiece is one of those cards that just so happens to be a victim of circumstance. Back when it was searchable, this card was a complete terror, but now since it's a lot less searchable, a lot less consistent, it could come off the list to one. Now you know you're reaching when you get to semi-limited, and you feel that Konami has realized the error of their ways, and not only have they rewarded this ABC Buster Dragon off the Forbidden list, they gave it to us to too. I can deal with that. Now, ABC Dragon Buster was just like Shut All Construct when it was banned. It did nothing to nobody. But the fact that ABCs were getting more support and Konami feared that ABCs would take over the format, the card was rightfully hit the one. Now, I'm not gonna lie, there's a lot of bias oozing out of my words but seriously, who doesn't love ABC? And if you don't like ABZ, 
You hate Michael Jackson. We already know it's easy as one, two, three. ABC Dragon Buster the two allows ABC to be competitive. And the fact that ABC Dragon Buster can't just be splashed in any deck, I mean, come on, it's literally just direct support for ABC. One thing that we noticed when we came into the lockdown tournament was that Sky Striker was still fairly disappointing. I mean, yes, it did get past round one. It beat Zodiax. I don't know if that's an accomplishment or if you should get a pat on the back for that. And then all of the flaws of Sky Striker started to become apparent. Now, I did read some comments, players saying that Sky Striker is a going second deck and it should be playing going second cards. You could be correct. But if a deck has to rely on going second and playing going second cards just to be able to compete inside of a format where decks play a super synchro engine that want to go first and build a board that you will not be able to break, even with cards like Evenly Match and Lightning Storm, you're not a good deck. We thought that a middle ground for making Sky Striker to the most busted deck in Yu-Gi-Oh to actually a fairly competitive deck was bringing Sky Striker multi role from limited to semi-limited. This allows them to actually play a grind game and gives them a reason to go first. Being able to cycle in those Sky Striker spell cards back to their side of the field for later use. But don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, we actually still have some other Sky Striker edits that would make the deck a contender, but not overly powerful. Speaking of overly powerful cards, we strongly feel that this card is a little too powerful. Like if it ever came off the list at more than one, you kind of have to look at it different. But it's a part of a strategy that isn't doing too hot right now. Even though the strategy is relatively good, Necros a Unicorn could be a boost to the Necros strategy coming off of the list. Now some players may argue that, hey, Cali Effect, this card is at three in the OCG and the deck does nothing. I literally want to tell you we play two different card games and if Harpy's Feather Duster on their list and Harpy's Feather Duster still forbidden on our list doesn't say enough, I don't know what to tell you. I did think the implications of Necros and Unicorn coming from one to three could be huge. Necros is actually not a terrible deck. It's one of the best ritual decks, if not the best ritual deck of all time. So I definitely want to play it safe, being able to special summon a monster that prevents the effects of extra deck monsters is something that you really should be wary about. I think with natural progression, Necros and Unicorn can come to three, but pump your brakes, let's try two first. Now moving forward to the unlimits. Typically in a forbidden list, unlimits literally mean nothing. They're cards that come completely off the forbidden list and have no impact. But in this particular list, I like to say that this is the guts of the forbidden list. This is what makes so many decks competitive. On my Forbidden List, I actually have Performer Pal Skull Crobat Joker. Now, this is huge. I think the reason why Skull Crobat Joker did get banned, come off the list and banned again, is because Pendulum were literally just a strategy of mechanic. It just did things. Pendulum decks with Electromite were literally just get two Pendulum monsters to make Electromite and then abuse the best cards of the pet mechanic. Pendulum decks of now kind of force you to actually play the archetype. While you could play Performer Pal Skull Crobat Joker inside of Endamion, you miss out on your normal summon. And your normal summon just so happens to be Spellbook Magician of Prophecy. And Spellbook Magician of Prophecy happens to give you two deeper cards as well as spell counters on your Endamion monsters. So I feel that it isn't as versatile as it used to be, and Performer Pal Skull Crobat Joker is a huge boost for Magician Pendulum decks. Pantheon's on the Monarch to three. I feel like I shouldn't have to talk about this card coming to three. Let's just move on to the next card. Dynamite the True Draco Fighter to three is also another huge boost to True Draco. This card obviously could not help anything other than True Draco. Sky Striker Widow Anchor also makes an appearance at three. Players may argue that this is terrible because it's abusable by other strategies, but if they want to play Sky Striker Mecha Widow Anchor at three inside of their deck, they probably would want to play two, and looking at how Yu-Gi-Oh has been played, it's been played at zero in any other deck other than Sky Strikers, meaning it hasn't been making the top cut at all. And the last card for you hero players, I didn't include a hero lives, but I gave you Destiny Hero Malicious. Destiny Hero Malicious was ironically more important to the hero concept than I think most players give it credit. Being able to get an additional hero monster meant that you get to make Dark Law and Destiny Hero Plasma. Currently, heroes aren't amazing. They did pretty well in the lockdown tournament, but I feel that that extra boost with Malicious could make them a contender inside of the format. Well, that's pretty much it. I know, I miss cards like Virtual Beast, Old Econa Hawk. To be honest with you guys, I've been screaming for that card to come off the list for so long, I'm tired. Like, tired. So I want you guys to post down below in the comment section about what cards that I missed. Am I completely wrong by not banning the Synchro Engine? Does every Edlich card need to go to one? 
Are the Anna Emancipator cards too busted? Is Blood Dragon better than Dragon Rulers? The answer to that question is actually yes, but again, go ahead and comment down below on everything that I missed. I hope you guys are staying safe in this time of need and having a great day, like I am.